Alkenes and cycloalkenes are hydrocarbons with CC double bonds. They are unsaturated. The term unsaturated means that more hydrogen atoms may be added to the hydrocarbon to make it saturated, that is all bonds become single bonds. In the double bond, one of the bonds is sigma, while the other is pi. These compounds are also called olefins. Alkenes are widely used in the manufacture of polymers such as plastics and adhesives. They have a general formula of CN H2N. For example, here is a 6-carbon alkene. Molecular formula is C6H12. For cycloalkenes, the general formula is CN H2N-2 and exemplified here by this compound containing a double bond and if we compare these two molecular formulas this compound here has two less hydrogen atoms. Alkenes have sp2 hybrid carbons connected to three other atoms in a trigonal planar arrangement as illustrated in this model. The alkanes can be considered to have two phases, one in this case at the top and the other at the bottom. This red and blue colored mesh are representations of the pi orbitals. They are perpendicular to the sigma bonds that connect the two carbon atoms. Alkanes and cycloalkanes are named by changing the ane of the corresponding alkane to in. For example, this compound having two carbons is called ethene in IUPAC. The common name of this compound is ethylene. This compound here containing three carbons is called propene in IUPAC and the common name is propylene for this compound. The difference in the name is only in the suffix. To name alkane, we follow the IUPAC substitutive nomenclature. Here we may use locants, prefixes, parent, and suffixes. Generally, we start numbering from the end of the chain closest to the group named in the suffix. The suffix will be in, and the in group is found at this position. So in this rule, our numbering should start at the terminal carbon closest to this in group, which is this carbon. And so we start by naming it. The in group starts at carbon 2 and we have a methyl group at carbon 5. Thus, we call this compound 5-methyl-2-hexene or it can also be named as 5-methyl-hex-2-in. These are both acceptable under IUPAC rules. If the chain containing the double bond is connected to another chain which is considered to be longer, this group here will be a substituent. The common name for this group is vinyl or ethenyl. Thus, we can call this compound as 4-vinyl heptane or 4-ethenyl heptane. How about this compound? For cycloalkenes, the naming will start from where the double bond is. And we can say that this is carbon number 1. This is carbon number 2. Since this methyl group is attached to carbon number 1, so this should be called 1-methyl cyclopentene. Again, here we should consider the numbering wherein the substituents have the lowest number. But the numbering will start where the double bond is. So 
we can start numbering from here. This is number one, number two, number three. It is not number one here, number two, number three, number four, because the numbering in that case would be higher. So for this compound, the name should start from ethyl, which is at carbon number four. So four ethyl, three methyl, cyclopentene. If the alkyl group containing the double bond is shorter than the cyclic structure, then it will be a substituent of that cyclic structure. This group is commonly called an allele or prop2in1-eel. Prop2in because the double bond is at position 2 with respect to the carbon attached to the cyclic structure. And so, we can call this compound as allyl cyclohexane. Take note that you don't need to put a locant if there's only one substituent. Another name that is also acceptable is prop2in1-eel cyclohexane. Starting from C4, a given molecular formula of an alkene can stand for different structures, and so we can have different isomers. C4H8 could be all of these compounds. If you would consider the alkene types, A and B are position isomers. The double bond is at different positions. A and C are chain isomers. They have different connections of atoms with respect to the main chain. A, B, and C are considered functional isomers of D and E because D and E belong to a different compound family. They are cycloalkanes. As mentioned before, there is restricted rotation about the double bonds, and this results in the formation of the cis and trans forms. These compounds are both tubutene. But the larger groups in this compound are positioned on the same side, whereas here they are on opposite sides. This compound here is called cis tubutene, while the other is called trans tubutene. As you see in these illustrations, the pi bonds prevent the rotation, and thus we have stereoisomers. They cannot be interconverted with each other without breaking any bonds. The atoms are connected in the same way but in different position in space. And so these isomers are considered diastereomers. Each of these carbons are stereogenic. That means that only a change in configuration of the attached atoms in this carbon will interconvert these two compounds. Now, an older term that is used for this type of isomerism is geometric isomerism. Presently, the usage of this term is discouraged by IUPAC. And so by this naming, we can call this compound as trans, because the larger groups are on opposite sides, trans 3-heptene. This compound here is obviously a cis-type alkene. We can start our numbering from here, 1, 2, and 3. So this compound is cis-2-methyl-3-hexene. There are also alkenes where you cannot designate as either cis or trans. For example, here, they have two methyl groups that are located at the same sides or on opposite sides of the double bond. So we simply call this 2-methyl 2-butene. The methyl group is positioned at carbon 2 and the double bond is positioned at carbon 2 and carbon 3. We use the lower number. How about this compound? Naming of this compound will be complicated if we use a cis and trans scheme. There are two groups 
on this side, we have only method on the other side. For this case, we use the more general naming scheme, which is based on the Z or E notations. Z comes from the German word zusammen, meaning together, or on the same side, and E comes from the word entgegen, which means opposite or on opposite sides. This naming scheme follows the Kahn Ingold Prelog rules for prioritization of atoms linked to double bonded carbons. Higher priority is given for higher atomic number or atomic mass in case of isotopes. If the atoms are the same, we can use the next layer of atoms to prioritize groups attached to the double bonded carbon. So for this example, if we show the hydrogens, we need to compare the groups that are attached to this carbon. This is hydrogen and this is carbon. Carbon has higher atomic number, so this must have higher priority. For the other side, this group will have higher priority. These two groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, so this is an E isomer, and we best call it as E3-heptene. Take note that in this naming, E is inside a parenthesis and is normally italicized. For this case here, this will be given higher priority, and also this has higher priority than the hydrogen, which is not shown here. So we can call this as a Z. 2-methyl-3-hexene. Now we can name this compound. We have here methyl and this is ethyl. So in terms of priority, there is a carbon here connected to a carbon and a carbon here connected to only hydrogens. So this ethyl group must have higher priority compared to this methyl group. Now on the other side of the double bond, this has higher priority. And so, we have a Z isomer in this case. The name of this compound is Z3-methyl-2-pentene. How about this one? On this side, the attached atoms are chlorine and bromine. Bromine has a higher atomic number than chlorine, so it will have higher priority. On this other side, we have ethyl and methyl. Ethyl has higher priority than methyl, and they are on opposite sides of the double bond, so this compound must be an E isomer. The name is E, 1 bromo, 1 chloro, 2-methyl-1-butene. There are also cases when you have more than one double bonds. We need to designate both double bonds as E or Z forms. Now, if we are going to number this, the numbering should start at the terminal end that is closest to the double bond. So, numbering should start here. This is number 1 number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The lowest number corresponding to the double bond would be 2 and 4. This first double bond is a Z form. This next double bond is an E form. So we have 2Z, 4E, 24 heptadiene or we can call this as 2Z, 4E, hepta 2,4-diene. Alkenes have low boiling points, like alkanes. Some are weakly polar due to the higher electronegativity of sp2 hybridized carbons over the sp3 carbons. Thus, a trans 2 butene which has no dipole moment, can have lower boiling point 
then cis to butene, which has a dipole moment of 0.37 dBi. This dipole moment comes from the double bond, hence the dipole moment will be going in this direction. Also, you can see that propene has a dipole moment. Boiling point increases with increasing number of carbons and branching lowers boiling point just like alkanes. You can see that propene here has a lower boiling point compared to butene. And if we add more carbons, the boiling point will increase. Alkenes are insoluble in water but are soluble in benzene, ether, or chloroform. All of these solvents are considered to be of low polarity. Alkenes are also less dense than water. 